So here I want to demonstrate a technique of how arthroscopy can be used to treat pain after reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Unfortunately, many people can have persistent pain after reverse shoulder replacement. And arthroscopy is really a minimally invasive approach that we can use to address many problems. As you see here, this is a right shoulder. What we're doing is we're inserting the arthroscope into the shoulder and I'm releasing adhesions that have formed after the procedure. This is particularly the case in people who have had multiple surgeries prior to the reverse shoulder arthroplasty. That makes them more prone to adhesions to form after the replacement. So the first thing I do is really clear out off all the adhesions from the subacromial space. That's the space above the rotator cuff. Here I can see the glenosphere. That's the ball part of the reverse shoulder replacement. I'm going to release some adhesions from around that ball. This is an electrocautery device I use to cut those adhesions. And then I'll re-establish the subacromial space. That's the space between the acromion bone above and then the deltoid out laterally, out to the side, and the remaining cuff and tuberosity below. So you can see this patient here has extensive adhesions, particularly in the front of the shoulder, and that's the most common place these adhesions form. I really put a big emphasis on clearing out these adhesions anteriorly, that is in the front of the shoulder. Now here I'm down to the bone. This is the base of the coracoid bone. That's that pointy bone right in the front of the shoulder. Many people will feel that prominent after reverse shoulder replacement. I identify that coracoid bone because Many people can get coracoid or subcoracoid impingement after a reverse shoulder replacement because the joint's more constrained. So as whereas the normal shoulder is very mobile, in this case with the reverse replacement, we have a tight space. So I clear out all these adhesions. There you can see the tip of that coracoid bone. I wanna make sure all the adhesions are free underneath the coracoid. This is really gonna help somebody get improved rotation out to the side, and that's particularly common. Now you see impingement. So the bone of the arm bone is hitting that coracoid. So I'll simply clear that off with a little bone cutting burr. We'll do this without sacrificing any of the tissue below, such as the conjoined tendon. Now that space is improved, and you can see I'll rotate the arm and we have improved clearance, and that should allow this particular patient to get improved internal rotation after this scope following reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Thank you.